brewing is steeped in tradition. And in some parts of the world, that tradition is intertwined with its faith. But behind the incredible architecture and mysterious doorways, you might just find some of the most fascinating beer styles to have ever been produced. This is the world of Trappist beer. But despite all of its heritage, there's still quite a lot of confusion over what these styles really mean. So let's get into it. Hello and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at three different Trappist beer styles to try and determine exactly what you should expect well, from any of them. The three we're gonna be taking a look at are the double or dubel, the triple or tripel, or the quad or quadrupel. And hopefully by the end of this video, both you and I will have a slightly better understanding of what both of these three Trappist beer styles really mean. Now I'm using the word Trappist rather than Belgian to describe these beers because well, Trappist beer styles aren't exclusive to Belgium, although they are synonymous with it. There are actually genuine Trappist brewers here in the UK, in the US, all over Europe, but well, let's be honest, Belgium is a little bit of its homeland. And yet, despite that, even one of the beers we have here today isn't Belgian either. And on to the beers we're gonna be taking a look at today. We're gonna to be kicking off with the double. This is a St. Barnardus Prior 8. We're then gonna move on to the triple, and well, let's be honest, it's probably the most renowned worldwide. It is the Westmel triple. And finally, we're gonna be, well, properly sending ourselves to sleep with the big quad, this one from La Trappe. And if you're sat there wondering which of these beers isn't actually Belgian, you would be forgiven for getting it wrong, because it is the one with the most, well, frank Belgian sounding name, La Trappe. And you might be even more surprised to find out they are in fact Dutch, which to be honest probably leads us onto a bit of important but very short Trappist history. The name given to any Trappist brewery is based on the origin of their order. And in the case of La Trappe, that is Solin La Trappe, which is, as you probably guessed, a French religious commune. As a result, this is a Dutch brewed beer of French origin synonymous with Belgium. I think we can already start to see why these beer styles are, if anything, a little confusing. And you might be thinking, why have you included such a confusing beer in the mix here, Tom? And I'll tell you why. It is because the term Trappist Ale actually stems from La Trappe. This is the origin of the term, even if not the origin of the style. So let's get the first of these magnificent looking bottles open, shall we? I will, of course, be starting with the double because it is the weakest of the three. And I think that's a common association. One assumes that the double is the weaker and then the triple's in the middle and the quad is at the end. And you'd be right, kind of, but more on that later. So as I said, this double is a St. Barnardus Prior 8, and it's coming in at 8% volume, so it's a hefty bottle. Uh, but yeah, it looks pretty fantastic, and the one thing that really stands out about the St. Barnardus stuff is the shelf life. I mean, all of these styles generally have pretty good shelf life, but in bottles, I believe this is four years, and on keg, it can go to two and a half, which, well, it's just impressive. Slightly excitable, that one. Oh dear. Well, it's not gone well. At this point, I was meant to talk to you a bit about the visual of this beer, and well, it, it looks like a marshmallow in a glass because that is just foam. Now, this beer is coming in at 8%, and it's got the word double or dubel, and that is, well, yeah, I mean, if you assume a normal beer is 4%, this is a double. So far, we're making quite a lot of sense. And if you're wondering why has this happened in the glass, well, this beer is both top fermented and double fermented. Top fermented just means it's brewed at a slightly warmer temperature in the traditional ale way, and what that basically means is not the same as a lager. The double fermentation, however, is the cause for well, this mess currently on my bar, and that is because it has not only been brewed and fermented at the brewery, but it's also been secondary fermenting, the double fermentation, in the bottle and it's done quite a lot of it, apparently. That secondary fermentation there really is just to get it carbonated and well, it is possible that you can get that wrong as we see right here. Let's analyze what we can take a look at though. I mean, that is a properly dark beer. It probably looks almost black on camera. If I hold it up to a light, it's a very deep amber, almost kind of nectar colored in the glass. It's got a massively frothy uh, off-white head to it. Um, it looks good, It well, it doesn't look great in the, this glass, let's be honest. But the clarity of the beer, it's got a little haze to it, a lot of carbonation, and it smells very, very sweet. It's, it's definitely got that traditional, what people associate with Belgian beer yeast, those sweeter, caramelized, think bubblegum, think banana, think, you know, those kind of flavors. That's definitely there. But this one, a kind of a secondary layer of more realistic caramel and then some sweet red berry notes on the nose as well. Quite eager to try this. I've not had a double for a long time, so cheers.
It's interesting. This, whilst this is undeniably quite a Belgian style beer or Trappist style beer, it's got maybe a bit milder hallmark of that yeast style. It's definitely there, but it just feels a bit softer, a bit more, well, let's be honest, if you're not that keen on Belgian beer, this might be an accessible form of it because it's very caramel and red berry forward. Those slightly more complex yeasty notes are lost a bit on the flavor. Um, all of these beers, by the way, are meant to be drank between eight and 12 degrees, which is, it's, it's, I guess it's cellar temperature. Um, most beers that get reviewed on the channel are a little cooler than that, if I'm honest, but this one, I've, well, all of these, I've allowed them to warm up a bit and Digging through the taste profile on that, there's some slight chocolatiness in there as well. It's a bit of a sweet treat, you like that. There's no massive hot flavours, it's not very spicy, it's, yeah, it, I'd say it's, it's sweet and accessible, the double, so far. Okay, that is the double done, and now we're on to the triple, and as I said before, this is the West Mal triple. This, I believe, a lot of people consider to be either the best or the quintessential, even if it's not maybe the best anymore, but it's been a long time since I've had one of these, actually, so I'm actually pretty excited right now. Um, quick look at the bottle for you there very trad very yeah inviting i think it's fair to say opening this one a bit slower so again we've got quite an excitable beer these maybe aren't the perfect glasses for the style but i don't have three identical or perfect well trappist appropriate glasses so this is what we're going to use but it's not quite as aggressive as the double was on the pour that's more about the actual packaging conditioning than the beer itself though um, visually though one thing that might start to stick out right now is that well that double was a big dark beer and this well that that's that's nice light blonde golden interesting eh so I haven't actually mentioned the ABV on this yet, and it is 9.5%, which is only 1.5% up from the double, which is where things start to get a little bit complicated again. In general, yes, the ABVs do rise from double to triple to quad, as you would expect, but not by massive steps. A very long time ago, when these styles were first conceived of, the double was made first, and that was made by using double the amount of ingredients that you get in their regular Trappist beer, kind of the four percenter. And that makes a bit of sense in terms of, well, you double the malt, you're gonna get double the ABV, you jump from four to eight, and that all is, is fine. The triple was then done in the same way. It's in theory should be 12%. However, well, it's not. There'll be a couple of reasons for that. One will be just the style's been refined. It probably was a bit too harsh at 12%. They've probably dropped it a bit to try and make something different. And as you can see, just because it effectively uses triple the amount of grain doesn't mean the same grain has been used, which is why there is, well, a very dark beer over here and a very light one over here because, yeah, quantity might have been exponentially increased, but the type has definitely been adjusted. Anyway, let's discuss this beer in particular. So visually, nice, gold, very soft, pillowy white head on it. The aroma is what I really class as that de facto Belgian Trappist style. It's yeasty, rich, sweet, bubblegum, a little bit of harshness from the hop, but it's predominantly massive, intense, as I say, almost sweet shop yeast style aroma. And and to be honest, I think this is the style that a lot of people gravitate towards when they're first trying Belgian beer, and might be the reason why some people shy away from it, because it's definitely not for everyone, but I'll be honest, I really like this style. So, I'm in for a good day. Let's give it a try, shall we? Cheers. That is basically an entirely different drinking experience to the first one. Whilst you can probably tell that the yeast strains are similar, their delivery and flavour is just miles apart. The double was a nice sweet dark beer that was almost akin to a modern day kind of I guess a mild imperial stout with some caramel and chocolate added to it. This is probably a bit closer to a modern IPA but well that delivery is still very different and whilst you don't necessarily get the fruity green piney hoppiness of say a modern pale you do get the resounding bitterness the bite the almost a sophistication in something that's not all that easy to drink but once you've had a few mouthfuls of it you get used to that sweetness from the yeast and it really is a delivery you don't get in any other beer style 
That then just leaves us with the quad, and as you've probably guessed, it's also not a straightforward situation. Uh, first up, a quick look at the bottle. I mean, that is about as kind of original and Trappist inspired as I think a label gets. It looks absolutely fantastic. I don't know how lively this one's gonna be, so let's be careful again. Okay, not too bad at all. Now, interestingly, I said that Westmel that we had here for the triple were basically the originators of all of these styles. But interestingly, they actually don't have a quad available to buy today. Um, I don't know whether they brew one privately or not, but yeah, and they aren't the only ones either. The quad seems to be a bit more of a volatile style of beer than the other two. The double and the triple seem to have kind of settled, at, well, these two being pretty much prime examples of the style. However, the quad can vary quite a bit more. As you can see, this one is a bit more, well, it's deep amber, it's got a red hue to it. I don't know if you can really tell on camera, but it's, well, it's almost a halfway house between these two. I think it's universally accepted that a quad is definitely darker than a triple, but how close it gets to a double is a thing that seems to be a little bit up for debate. This beer though, it's coming in at 10% on the nose. So we started off at eight, we've gone to nine five, and now we've just gone a little perk up to 10. I did have a look around and 10% seems to be the go-to target for a quad at the minute. There are a few breweries doing significantly higher ABVs with these things, but in general, certainly the more, I guess, classic, genuine, Trappist Brewers, yeah, 10% seems to be the sweet spot. Big, red, deep, it's beyond golden now. It's a, it's almost a light red ale, really. And the slight upping of the ABV as well has meant that head really hasn't hung around much at all. It is a pretty clear beer though, this one from La Trap, and the aroma is nowhere near as maybe spiky as the triple, and isn't quite as sweet and roasty as the double. It's as its visual would suggest, sitting a little bit in between. It kind of takes the intensity of that traditional Trappist yeast vibe from the triple, along with some of the red berry notes from the double, and results in something, well, to be honest, I think I might actually prefer. So let's give it a go, shall we? Cheers for the last time. And that one is interesting. We started off down here with a variety of flavors at low intensity. Then we got to the triple, which had a similar variety of flavors, but at quite a high intensity. And then we moved on to the quad, which, well, to be honest, maybe has a few less flavors, but, well, as you probably expect, quite a lot of intensity. The flavor's still quite sweet here. The alcohol's not really hiding itself on this one at all. It probably tastes the booziest out of the lot, it is the strongest, but there's not a big jump really between any of them, and especially triple to quad. It, it just feels a lot more winter warmer, the quad. It's definitely not hiding itself. It's definitely being open and just, well, admitting that it's a bit of a little boozy boy. And yeah, same with the aroma, really. It's that distinct bubblegum, banana, intense, slightly spritzy yeast vibe from the triple mixed with some light, maybe lighter caramel than you got with the double because it is a lighter beer, but still a lot of those kind of deep, sweet red berry notes. But as I already said, this style is very changeable and I'm not so sure that the La Trappe is definitely the de facto. There's so few of them really that there's not really a lot of cohesion across the style at all. So when you're going to order a quad, it really is a bit up to chance of what you're going to get. A prime example of that is St. Bonadus that we've got down here for the double. They also make a quad that is as dark, if not darker, than their double. So there is massive, massive variation going on. And if that wasn't quite confusing enough, remember this double that we've got from St. Bonadus at 8%? Well, St. Bonadus also do another double that clocks in at 6.7. So... There is pretty significant variances across the board in terms of ABVs. Triples, I reckon, could easily be the eight up to maybe 11. You know, the quads, probably nine through to 14. And back to the doubles, they could be anything that's roughly double a normal beer. So let's say, yeah, six to eight percent is probably the range. So you can't really tell by ABV what you're going to get. And the style, well, is a bit more coerced between these two. And as I said, the quad, if you've not tried it before, 
It's potluck. So what have we learnt here today then? Well, the double is 2x or two times the original base beer. Interesting, the, the original beer actually isn't made anymore. You can't go and buy an original Trappist ale. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I've seen Trappist ales up for sale. Well, Trappist ales generally actually are just a double under a different name. As long as it's, yeah, six, seven, eight percent, it, it's a double in one way or another. So yeah, that is kind of what you're gonna be getting. But as I was saying, the triple, three times roughly the original ingredients of the original beer, and of course the quad in with four times the ingredients of the traditional beer. But that is all it really refers to. They now kind of stand for their own distinct styles, except for the quad, which is a bit confused. It is fairly safe to assume that there's an ABV step between the three of them, especially when you're talking about beers from the same Trappist brewer, but not all Trappist brewers are singing from the same hymn sheet, pardon the pun. So if you go in, you're gonna order a double, you should expect a dark, malty, sweet, caramel, chocolate, berry kind of beer, a bit more akin to a modern stout, six to eight percent, you kind of know where you are. If you go in and order a triple, you should expect something big, strong, Blonde, sweet, fruity, lots of yeasty esters that you are used to in, what, a lot of Belgian styles. And you're getting quite a lot more hot character than you are with the other two. And they normally sit around the 8 to 10% mark. In my mind, the triple is what most people think of when they think of the de facto Belgian beer style. But what we've learned today is, well, actually, it's quite a bit broader. And if you go and order a quad, whilst you might not be able to guarantee what it's going to look like, smell like, taste like... What you can be sure of is that it's just the amped up version of basically everything that came before it. It's likely to be a bit darker, it's likely to be a bit richer, it's likely to be a lot more boozy, and you're likely to get an array of flavours from all triples and doubles that came before it, because that is just a big warm hug in a glass, if I'm honest. It hasn't quite got the hop intensity of the triple, it's got a shed load more than the double, it's a bit sweeter than the triple, and saying the word double, triple and quad now after I've been sipping all three of these beers is becoming infinitely more difficult. So hopefully now you might be a little bit more clued up on what it means when you're ordering one of these Trappist beer styles. I certainly am after tasting all of these and doing the research for this video. But yeah, let me know. Which is your favourite out of these three, in terms of styles at the very least? And what would your definition of a quad be? Because that's the one with a real question mark over it. In the comments below, please. And that really is all I've got to say about them. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you'll be so kind. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.